Today in the A to Z of guitars, I'm talking about fingerboards, but what part specifically? Hi people, Daniel from Devon Sons Guitars here, and you could probably answer that last question really easily if you'd seen the title or the thumbnail for this video. I'm talking about fingerboard radius. And we're gonna look at how we measure it and why it makes a difference. But don't forget the F here comes from a well-known brand. And at the end of this series, once you've watched all 26 videos, there'll be a video up telling you what brand that's from. Let's go look at some fingerboards. So here are three necks that I've just have in my workshop lying around. And they're gonna be a good example for us to test measuring the fretboard radius on. You see that one of them's a bass, one of them's a Les Paul style neck, and then the bottom one actually doesn't have any frets on. So the fretboard or the fingerboard may look quite flat when you first look at it, but it's actually radiused. If you imagine a whole circle and a small section of that circle cut out, that makes the radius of the fretboard. Now, fretboards might come, for example, in seven and a quarter inches, nine and a half inches, 10, 12, 14 inches. And what we mean by inches is the radius of that circle. It's all measured in inches. Now, that radius, if we look here, when you've got a smaller radius, like seven and a quarter, compared to 14, the smaller radius has a bigger curve. Now, why would you want a different curve? I would say most players probably won't notice much of a difference. You'd easily be able to switch between different styles of playing. I learned to play on a classical guitar. Classical guitars are flat. But the reason you might have a difference is rhythm players, for example, tend to prefer a bit more curve. It makes it easier to bar a chord because your finger naturally bends when you're barring because your finger isn't flat. So when you're barring chords, a bigger curve might be easier for you. Of course, there's lots of things to take into account here. There's the shape of the neck. I'm gonna make a whole other video about the shape of the neck and how that might affect your playing. There's the size of your hands and there's the exact style of music you're playing. If you're playing lead with lots of scales and moving around, you might find a flatter radius easier for your playing when you're, when you're doing these scales and, and sweep picking, for example. Now there is another type of fingerboard or fretboard, and that is what we call a compound radius fretboard. And that is where you go from the nut end of the neck and you have a smaller radius, so more, more curvature to the bridge end of the neck where it reaches the body, where you've got a flatter neck, so less curvature. The idea being there that you play mainly rhythm at the end near the nut and mainly lead at the end where it meets the body. Now, the way that actually works is you have to imagine instead of a nice curved cylinder that your fretboard's cut out of, it's more like a cone. So at one end, it's got a smaller radius. At the other end, it's got a bigger radius and it slides between them gradually. Now, let me show you some tools that you might use to measure your own fretboard radius, either with the strings on or without the strings on. And then we can go back to those necks I showed you at the beginning and measure those. Some tools I have for measuring the fretboard radius. These ones you can actually put under your strings while the strings are on the guitar and they've got the radius marked on it nine and a half. So we go under the string and onto the fretboard. So the understring ones simply go under your string like this. There we are under all six strings and then you stand it up and you can measure to see if it's the same. Now this one bending down I can see is letting a bit of light through underneath the middle. So it's just resting on the two edges, which means that this arc is too big. So it's a 12, so I'd have to go lower to find the correct one. But then I prefer using these gauges. Um, each edge is at a different radius. So you can see here, this one goes from 14, 15, 16, 20. And here I've got seven and a quarter, nine and a half, ten and twelve. So here we go with the bass neck first. I'm going to put a red light here and I'm going to go in with my feeler gauge. Let's start at seven and a quarter and you can see the red light shining underneath the gauge there. There we go. So we jump up to nine and a half. There's still a bit of light. Ten. Oh, still a little bit and 12, there we go. That's blocking the light out. 
So on the base, we've got a 12 inch radius neck. So here we go with the Les Paul. If we start with seven, we can see there's light going through. I jump up to 10, or oh, there's light on the edges. And nine and a half seems right for this one. Nine and a half for the Les Paul style copy neck. And let's give it a go on the Encore. The Encore hasn't got the frets on it, so I thought that might make it easier. I'm gonna start, oh, that's it. There we go. It's a 14 inch neck. Great, thanks for watching. Now, if you do notice the difference between fingerboard radiuses and you have a preferred one, please leave a comment below. It'll be great to see which is the most popular. It may help me make a decision about future guitar builds. Anyway, if you did find this video useful, please share it with other people. Share it in the forum, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter. You don't have to buy one of my guitars to support me. Social media support is just as useful. So while you're here, why not click thumbs up, like and subscribe. Until next time, happy strumming.